Gaidama Passon, Henri René Albert Gaidama Passon, August 5, 1850, July 6, 1893, was a French writer, remembered as a master of the short story form, and as a representative of the naturalist school of writers, who depicted human lives and destinies and social forces in disillusioned and often pessimistic terms. Maupassant was a protege of Gustave Flaubert and his stories are characterized by economy of style and efficient, effortless denouements, outcomes. Many are set during the Franco-Prussian War of the 1870s, describing the futility of war and the innocent civilians who, caught up in events beyond their control, are permanently changed by their experiences. He wrote some 300 short stories, six novels, three travel books, and one volume of verse. His first published story, Boule de Suif, Ball of Suet, 1880, is often considered his masterpiece. Henri René Albert Guy de Maupassant was born August 5, 1850, at the Chateau de Mirome Snil, Castle Mirome Snil, near Dieppe in the Saint Enfer year, now Saint Maritime, department in France. He was the first son of Laura Le Poitevin and Gustave de Maupassant, both from prosperous bourgeois families. His mother urged his father when they married in 1846 to obtain the right to use the particular form de Maupassant instead of Maupassant as his family name, in order to indicate noble birth. Gustave discovered a certain Jean Baptiste Maupasson, concealer secretary to the king, who was ennobled in 1752. He then obtained from the Tribunal Civil of Rouen by decree dated July 9, 1846, the right to style himself de Maupasson instead of Maupasson, and this was his surname at the birth of his son Guy in 1850. When Maupasson was 11 and his brother Hervé was 5, his mother, an independent minded woman, risked social disgrace to obtain a legal separation from her husband who was violent towards her. After the separation, Laura Le Poitevin kept her two sons. With the father's absence, Maupassant's mother became the most influential figure in the young boy's life. She was an exceptionally well-read woman and was very fond of classical literature, particularly Shakespeare. Until the age of 13, Guy happily lived with his mother, at a tretot, in the Villa des Bergais, where, between the sea and the luxuriant countryside, he grew very fond of fishing and outdoor activities. At age 13, his mother next placed her two sons as day boarders in a private school, the institution Leroy Petty, in Rouen, the institution Robineau of Maupassant's story law question du Latin for classical studies. From his early education he retained a marked hostility to religion, and to judge from verses composed around this time he deplored the ecclesiastical atmosphere, its ritual and discipline. Finding the place to be unbearable, he finally got himself expelled in his next to last year. In 1867, as he entered junior high school, Maupassant made acquaintance with Gustave Flaubert at Croisset at the insistence of his mother. Next year, in autumn, he was sent to the Lycée Pierre Cornet in Rouen where he proved a good scholar indulging in poetry and taking a prominent part in theatricals. In October 1868, at the age of 18, he saved the famous poet Algernon Charles Swinburne from drowning off the coast of Etretat. The Franco-Prussian War broke out soon after his graduation from college in 1870, he enlisted as a volunteer. In 1871, he left Normandy and moved to Paris where he spent ten years as a clerk in the Navy Department. During this time his only recreation and relaxation was boating on the Seine on Sundays and holidays. Gustave Flaubert took him under his protection and acted as a kind of literary guardian to him, guiding his debut in journalism and literature. At Flaubert's home. He met Emile Zola and the Russian novelist Ivan Turgenev, as well as many of the proponents of the realist and naturalist schools. He wrote and played himself in a comedy in 1875, with the benediction of Flaubert. In 1878, he was transferred to the Ministry of Public Instruction and became a contributing editor to several leading newspapers such as Le Figaro, Gil Blas, Le Gaulois, and L'Echo de Paris. He devoted his spare time to writing novels and short stories. In 1880 he published what is considered his first masterpiece, Boule de Suif, which met with instant and tremendous success. Flaubert characterized it as a masterpiece that will endure. This was Maupassant's first piece of short fiction set during the Franco-Prussian War, and was followed by short stories such as Du Amos, Mother Savage, and Mademoiselle Fifi. The decade from 1880 to 1891 was the most fertile period of Maupassant's life. Made famous by his first short story, he worked methodically and produced two or sometimes four volumes annually. His talent and practical business sense made him wealthy. 
1881 he published his first volume of short stories under the title of La Maison Tellier, it reached its 12th edition within two years. In 1883 he finished his first novel, Un V, translated into English as A Woman's Life, 25,000 copies of which were sold in less than a year. His second novel Bellamy, which came out in 1885, had 37 printings in four months. His editor, Havard, commissioned him to write more stories, and Maupassant continued to produce them efficiently and frequently. At this time he wrote what many consider to be his greatest novel, Pierre at G. With a natural aversion to society, he loved retirement, solitude, and meditation. He traveled extensively in Algeria, Italy, England, Brittany, Sicily, Auvergne, and from each voyage brought back a new volume. He cruised on his private yacht Bellamy, named after his novel. This life did not prevent him from making friends among the literary celebrities of his day, Alexander Dumas. Fies had a paternal affection for him, at aix les bains met Hippolyte Taine and became devoted to the philosopher-historian. Flaubert continued to act as his literary godfather. His friendship with the Goncourt was of short duration, his frank and practical nature reacted against the ambience of gossip, scandal, duplicity, and invidious criticism that the two brothers had created around them in the guise of an 18th-century style salon. Maupassant was one of a fair number of 19th-century Parisians, including Charles Gounod, Alexandre Dumas, Fils, and Charles Garnier, who did not care for the Eiffel Tower. He often ate lunch in the restaurant at its base, not out of preference for the food but because it was only there that he could avoid seeing its otherwise unavoidable profile. He and 46 other Parisian literary and artistic notables attached their names to an elaborately irate letter of protest against the tower's construction, written to the Minister of Public Works. Maupassant also wrote under several pseudonyms such as Joseph Prunier, Guy de Valmont, and Maufray News, which he used from 1881 to 1885. In his later years he developed a constant desire for solitude, an obsession for self-preservation, and a fear of death and paranoia of persecution caused by the syphilis he had contracted in his youth. It has been suggested that his brother, Hervé, also suffered from syphilis and the disease may have been congenital. On January 2, 1892, Maupassant tried to commit suicide by cutting his throat, and was committed to the private asylum of Esprit Blanche at Passy, in Paris, where he died July 6, 1893. Maupassant penned his own epitaph, I have coveted everything and taken pleasure in nothing. He is buried in section 26 of the Montparnasse Cemetery, Paris. Maupassant is considered a father of the modern short story. He delighted in clever plotting, and served as a model for Somerset Mom and o. Henry in this respect. One of his famous short stories, The Necklace, was imitated with a twist by both Malm, Mr. Know-All, A String of Beads, and Henry James, Pace. Taking his cue from Balzac, Maupassant wrote comfortably in both the high realist and fantastic modes, stories and novels such as L'Héritage and Bellamy aimed to recreate Third Republic France in a realistic way, whereas many of the short stories, notably La Horle and Quisse, describe apparently supernatural phenomena. The supernatural in Maupassant, however, is often implicitly a symptom of the protagonist's troubled minds. Maupassant was fascinated by the burgeoning discipline of psychiatry, and attended the public lectures of Jean Martin Charcot between 1885 and 1886. Leo Tolstoy used Maupassant as the subject for one of his essays on art. His stories are second only to Shakespeare in their inspiration of movie adaptations with films ranging from Stagecoach, Citizen Kane, Oki the Virgin and Masculine Feminine. Friedrich Nietzsche's autobiography mentions him in the following text. I cannot at all conceive in which century of history one could haul together such inquisitive and at the same time delicate psychologists as one can in contemporary Paris, I can name as a sample, for their number is by no means small, or to pick out one of the stronger race, a genuine Latin to whom I am particularly attached, Guy de Maupassant. William Saroyan wrote a short story about Maupassant in his 1971 book, Letters from 74 Rotate About or Don't Go But If You Must Say Hello to Everybody. Isaac Babel wrote a short story about him, Guy de Maupassant. It appears in the collected stories of Isaac Babel and in the story anthology You've Got to Read This, contemporary American writers introduced stories that held them in awe. Gene Roddenberry, in an early draft for the Quester tapes, wrote a scene in which the android Quester employs Maupassant's theory that, the human female will open her mind to a man to whom she has opened other channels of communications. 
In the script Quester copulates with a woman to obtain information that she is reluctant to impart. Due to complaints from NBC executives, this part of the script was never filmed. Michel Dretsch directed and co-wrote a 1982 French biographical film, Guy de Maupassant. Claude Brusser stars as the titular character. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.